Meg.com are introducing a new feature called the grid that basically lets you stack your scenarios into larger systems, which themselves form part of bigger systems and bigger processes. This week, I went to Munich to the Make conference and it, it was incredible. I got to meet so many people from a YouTube channel and from the school community at the event. And we learned a lot about the future of Make. New features that have just been released, things that are coming on the roadmap, things like Make AI, the grid, lots of features that we probably don't even know exist yet. And this video, I'm gonna run through what they are, what you can do about it, because I think some of them actually are gonna change the way that we think about things like AI automation agencies and create some really dope opportunities. But going straight to the chase, let's start with what I think was their biggest announcement, which was the grid. Now, the grid, it sounds really epic. What is it basically? So you can see here, I'm trying out on screen as you speak. It's basically, the way that Make currently works, right, is we built these really cool automation the use cases, but the problem is they're very separate, they're very distinct. And if you're anything like me, you'll make scenarios, probably got like a billion things on it, and you're always scrolling. Now, these automations, actually, they cluster to form intelligent systems. Say, for example, we have an onboarding. Let's say you could have four, five, or six different automations that spring together to create an awesome onboarding. What the grid will enable you to do is have those automations next to each other. And you'll be able to zoom out and say, look, actually that automation is number one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can say onboarding is comprised of all these automations. And then you can zoom out again and see what I would call it the macro level picture, which is onboarding, offboarding, recruitment, and how all of these systems come together to create something quite cohesive. So what does it mean for you from an AI automation agency perspective? What does it mean for you in terms of your business? Well, I think this is big. This is probably the biggest announcement they did. Playing around with it at the moment, it's in closed beta, so we're just getting user feedback at the moment. It's it's really dope, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's ace because you can use this as a tool to explain to clients, hey, this is how this automation fits as part of something that's more cohesive and larger. And on top of that, I think what the opportunity is going to be now going forward with this stuff is actually not just thinking about in terms of solving one use case, but realistically, how does that fit together as part of a more cohesive systems? So you almost bring that systems engineering skill set to the table, which is look, yes, we need to solve onboarding, but actually onboarding is connected to some larger processes. Hearing the CEO of Meg talk about what their roadmap is over the next three to five years, what was apparent to me is that their target customer seems to be very large corporate. So for example, they had a guy from Warner Bros who came up and there's Warner Bros, right? I don't know what it is, but you know what company I'm talking about. They came up and they spoke about how they were using it. And there's a big theme I'm going to touch on later in the video on that, which I really want you to listen to because I think it's going to be really interesting is they want big corporate clients because obviously it drives more operations for the company, but that's why they're really trying to solve and take a systematic view, which means that your purview as an AI automation agency or in your own business is going to increase because you can build the entire business using the grid. Very, very cool. And so the meta may develop to be kind of automating the structural engineering for your automations and your AI. So practically what I recommend that you do now is if you've got clients already or you're looking to start, start thinking about actually how you can build and construct the automations that you create into cohesive systems. Because when the system's created, a system is created of multiple automations that pull together to deliver a particular outcome. For example, onboarded clients. Uh, you know, you may say qualified leads that are then pairing you, okay? Awesome, so if that's the actual outcome, there may be seven to eight mini automations that sit behind that. So the view would be, okay, cool, let's start thinking about it then in terms of a system of automations rather than one-shot wonders. We also got to look at some other really cool technologies they're developing, like split A-B testing. There was lots of stuff around improving what they called error resilience, attaching notes to different modules and stuff. So Basically, when you're passing it from team to team or people within your organization, you can actually understand you know, what the hell is going on in each individual star, which is pretty cool. There's some progress on authenticating webhooks. The dashboard is getting a bit of an upgrade. And really, there's just lots of little mini things that they're solving. They seem to be listening to what everybody's saying, like, oh, I'd really like it if you could do this, for example, or if you could do that. So they seem to be responsive about what people actually do what are the problems they want to solve and just trying to get many quick solutions for those problems. One of the cool things they had was around scenario outputs. So what this would enable me to do is let's say we have a scenario that delivers something in particular, you can use the outputs from that scenario in another scenario, which is really cool. One of the things that you can do right now on Make is actually using the Make module, run a scenario from within a scenario. There's also something really cool that you can do in terms of AI generated tools. The other thing they touched on they're gonna be introducing soon is around timings. So for example, let's say that 
we have somebody that's onboarded, but we want to wait 21 days before we send another sequence off. It will enable you to time delay certain actions for whatever purpose you want to. Again, I think a lot of it is heading the direction of turning make into something that really kind of spreads its tentacles into every area of the business and giving you the tools so that you can actually become, if you'd like, a one-stop shop for that. What was really cool actually was they showed, they seem to be really proud of a couple of examples of when they had like companies and there's three businesses they showed, which had basically created an entire business running off make. So they liked that, but I think their preference for direct travel is like, how can we embed ourselves and be as valuable as possible to an entire organization? So they want to give you the tools essentially to be able to grow that and smash it with any business that you're working with, or of course, just your own business. There was a huge focus on what they called like systems of record and AI integrations. There was also a really cool slide where they showed all the apps and like what was the most used app. And what they found, I think it was like chat GPT or AI apps are the second most used app on the entire platform, which is really cool. So they understand that AI and automations is a complete game changer. I would love to have seen more content from them on the AI and automation space. I think they seem to be, they're embracing AI. I mean, this is cool stuff, I'll tell you in a second. But it seems to be more about, they're really leaning into their core strength, which is like the systems and the connectivity and the automations, and then kind of leveraging AI as in one. So one of the things they're gonna be releasing soon is something called Make AI. And I think what they've basically done is looked at what are, the most popular use cases people are taking chat GPT for, and they'll say, oh, okay, it's stuff like summarize this or translate this or do X or do Y. And they're trying to embed that itself within make AI because they say there's some, I think it's because there's some friction with setting up chat GPT or Claude in terms of getting like your API keys and linking that together. So they're trying to make that even simpler and they're building make AI in that sense. But they're trying to think also intelligently about how they can leverage AI within the whole system to make it as easy as possible. And one of the other really cool things that they teased was this idea that if you could give it basically the API documentation for anything and it would create an app for you, which sounds like flipping crazy because if you think that makes superpower is basically connecting things. Like for us, Maker's Lego, and we're showing all the cool stuff that you could build in develop, which is pretty epic. Giving something just, hey, here's API docs, build the app, Bam, it's connected. There's also some really cool new features like make.com AI formulas and running scenarios. We've got some quick tutorials in the community on that if you want to come and check that out. And it was amazing to meet you, the community, YouTube channel. Everyone is, I do, honestly, every single person up to the YouTube channel, our community, are just so kind and crushes intelligent people. It's a real pleasure meeting you in person. So if you said hello, thank you. It was really great to meet you. Now, here's the clear, what the hell do we do next as a result of this information bit? systems. So when we think of automations, start to think about it in terms of intelligent systems, how we can combine those separate things together to create something interesting. So for example, if you just take a step back, okay, and let's take onboarding as a really clear example, we can have individual automations that run, but then we can actually take a bird's eye view of it and say, okay, awesome. Look, this is the ultimate system. And then when you're working with clients or you're looking at your own particular automations, you can start to connect those together more intelligently rather than saying, okay, well, People need a welcome email. Let's up a welcome email automation. How about instead thinking about, look, what does the perfect scenario look like? And start to build up backwards from there. So you actually organize them together in systems. You may have onboarding one out of six, two out of six, three out of six, four out of six. I guess it's mainly just a call for you to think, take a step back. How does everything fit together intelligently? If I were to have my business on a sheet of paper, what would the core functions be? And then you can roll them back. But in any case, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.